Greetings and peace. I hope you and yours are doing well today, wherever you might be watching this from. Now, the title of today's video and discussion will be A Spiritual and Masonic and Sufi Reflection of Paolo Coelho's The Alchemist. Excuse me if I'm mispronouncing the author's name. I was recommended to read this book by someone near and dear to my heart, a friend and brother of mine, and also someone else who had recommended that I read this book as this book is a testament and a recommendation to those on the path who are seekers and knowers and learners and doers of any path. And I truly enjoyed stepping into the story of Santiago and the author making you feel like you were Santiago. It was such a um, beautiful experience and it takes you from each step of his life until he realizes that whatever it is that you seek, your personal legend is within your heart. Now, I in, I will interpret this from my Masonic background as a Freemason and as a Sufi Muslim, as, a, as an initiate of the Islamic mysticism. And uh, what I say here represents myself only, no Masonic authority or body, nor any Sufi order. I myself as a free man under free speech, and also myself as a consumer of the book to reserve my rights to address the book in my own way. So all that, all those foundations <laughs> laid for the conversation. Now we'll um, basically go through the story and then after that I will um, address the points from my Sufi and Masonic background that stood out to me in my interpretation of Santiago's story. Now Santiago is someone basically who followed his heart. His father, an Andalusian boy in Spain, and it was a time where his father had recommended he had became a, a priest to go into seminary. So he said, no, I'm going to follow my heart. He becomes a sheep herder. One day his journey starts. He goes to the market and he sees this beautiful Moorish girl. And he feels uh, so attracted to her. He just asks, and she's curious about him. They're asking questions. And then he realizes the aspect of finding a, um, a treasure, I think, within his dream or so. And you know interpreting his dream which helps him realize that I can become this uh, rich sheep herder or become a rich man and then ask the merchant's daughter's hand and settle down and have a good life all you know all those things that a man thinks in his life to have good finances have a good wife etc and he goes and sees a gypsy woman who tells him about this path and the Egyptian pyramids and all that and says one tenth of the treasure you have to promise that it will be mine and Santiago realizes his situation and he eventually finds his way to Egypt through whatever means that he could and there in this place um, in, the, in the Tangier he comes across this individual who promises him everything gives him hopes and dreams but he ends up taking everything from him so he had ended up dealing with a thief and then Santiago felt hopeless. He was in this land and with this people who were not his religion, not his language, not his background. What do I do? He felt helpless. For, and from my Masonic interpretation, I saw that as an order out of chaos moment. And then he meets a, um, a Muslim merchant with a crystal shop. And Santiago advises him, hey, you know, if you do this, maybe you'll bring in more clientele. It'll be better for you. And then over time, they build a relation, the merchant takes a liking to him, and they build this bond with one another. And months, months, I mean, weeks become months, months become years. And before you know it, that seed that Santiago planted allowed him to make that uh, journey. And, and also, it was all meant to be because the, he helped the merchant realize many of his dreams and um, qualities about himself too so he was always where he was meant to be the people that he was meant to speak to and the things that he was meant to do and if it wasn't for the thief doing that to him that wouldn't have led him to the merchant and eventually to the pyramids so Santiago's story is also teaching us is that the good and bad moments of your life it's a chain of events it's linking one thing to another don't feel disheartened about whatever you're feeling for the present and look it's how long it took him to stay with the merchant and eventually build that money and experience for him to be able to make that journey so it's not easy it's not something that comes instantly you got to work through it through the good and bad times not lose your faith and uh, they also address the word maktub in arabic so maktub means like it is written like fate and in surah 7 of the holy quran the prophet muhammad peace be upon him mentions the aspect of fate 
and why you should believe that whatever is for you, whatever is meant for you, will come for you. No need to have any hate or jealousy or envy for anybody. Oh, why does this person have this? Why don't I have it? What's for you, what's meant for you, will find its way to you. In terms of wealth, jobs, degrees, experiences, spouse, etc. Don't sweat yourself about anything. And just trust the process. That's what it is. So eventually he finds his way to the pyramids. He goes there. Uh, excuse me. He finds his way to this uh, desert where he deals with, um, he experiences a lot of the Bedouins. The Bedouin tribes and these different tribes, um, Arab tribes that he comes across. He meets this British gentleman who's very well read, literate in terms of his sense of uh, literature on alchemy and these different things. And he's looking for this individual named the alchemist. And now that lays the foundation for the story. And when Santiago meets all of these different individuals, also the aspect of trusting the omens of God, the birds, he also comes across this woman named Fatima. And as soon as he looks at Fatima, he falls in love with her. And he realized that his true treasure was the love that he had found within this woman. That was his true treasure. And um, he realized, uh, you know, when the alchem when he eventually finds the alchemist, and the alchemist tells him, including in the beginning, which the old man, Melchizedek. Now, from the Sufi point of view, Melchizedek is al Kidr, the green one. And whenever the seeker is ready, that's when he will appear to you in whatever form. So in Islam, he's al Kidr. In the Christian Judeo aspect, he could be Melchizedek, the order of Melchizedek. He will be, be there to guide the seeker, known as the old man or whatever, whatever you names that are out there for him, to guide you. So it reminded him a lot when he comes across these different omens and situations, meeting Fatima and the alchemist and all those things. And the alchemist tests him. Eventually, when he finds the alchemist, he will take him to this place where a lot of these tribal chieftains were. And uh, they basically, he gives all of his life savings to them. And Santiago gets upset again because it reminds me of the thief. And the, um, you know, the... Uh, alchemist reminds him that you have to trust fate you have to trust God and they have this bet that you have to turn into the wind and just show them what you're made of so he basically puts him on the spot eventually he does it he does it and he finds his way to the pyramids and Santiago there gets confronted by these robbers who take away the discs the gold discs that the alchemist gave him in compensation for his gold and then it was funny because the, the robber who basically robbed him and said, I'm not going to kill you. You're going to live. And then Santiago makes the concept of the dreams. And he said, oh, we can all dream. And then he, the dream that he tells him is basically where the treasure is, is where, where, it's home, where his home is. The sycamore tree and the church and all that. It was right there. And when Santiago goes back home empty-handed, he realizes that the treasure he was looking for were right in front of him in his home. He just didn't realize it. And that was God's sense of humor. He said, I just wanted you to see the pyramids when the voice talks to him that, it, you know, aren't the pyramids beautiful? And I put you all through all of that with God's grand plan and sense of humor. So Santiago could come back with the amount of growth that he would to become the seeker of light that he was meant to become. And eventually he found his treasure and he goes back to Fatima to his real treasure and love. So that was basically a summary of the story that I gave, you know, to my with the best of my interpretation and understanding. And I recommend um, you read the book. You read it. It's one of the greatest books that I read as a Sufi and as a Freemason. Now, with that foundation laid of my interpretation now, I will... I've taken like three pages of notes. So that way, each point that stood out to me from each, um, I guess, chapter or part of the book, I can address it from my own point of view. So I highly recommend you check this out. All right, that said, now we go into the interpretation part. So the intro, going in, into the intro, let me show you the notes. So there we go. So the intro, you have the author, Paolo Coelho. He never gave up no matter what. What you seek is seeking you. And it is um, his aspect of becoming an author. When he first published The Alchemist, nobody knew. 
And how much struggle and heartbreak did he have to go through to accomplish what he wanted to accomplish? So he's basically teaching us that I am reminded that it is within our power to build a bridge to be crossed. Understand my story despite politics and religion. It reminds me a lot of Sufi and Masonic teachings where even if somebody disagrees with you, at least give them a chance to hear them out. Like what I do with my different videos and interpretations, not everyone will get it. But they're not going to look at me that, oh, he's a Pakistani Muslim or he's a Mason or he's this or that. They're going to be willing to hear me out because I have something to share with them that will help them. And that's what this is, that this is a story that brings us together where you have a Christian Andalusian boy from Spain who goes to this distant land. He finds love. He finds his own self within his own heart and realizes is that the treasure that he was seeking was within him the whole time. Even though we're always looking here, we're always looking there, we're always looking here. But what we're looking is always within us. And well, the aspect of God, that ultimately it's all like, you know, what the alchemist and the old man Melchizedek told them, that everything is basically one. It's all interconnected. Like from the Sufi point of view, you would have the aspect of the 99 names of Allah, Allah Had. Everything is one. You have, you know, the aspect of the light of Nur Muhammad, peace be upon him, that everything comes from that one light. And that's exactly what the source is. You have the Masonic aspect, the point within the circle. God, the grand architect, being the point within the circle. And everything around that circle, whether it be race, religion, philosophy, way of life, it all leads back to that point, that center, the source of it all. And all everything within that circle is a tapestry of different colors and patterns on the canvas of life that is to be celebrated, not dismissed. So I really um, can respect what Paolo is saying here. Now the prologue, there is a story of a man named Narcissus and the lake where the lake and Narcissus are always looking at each other. And one day when Narcissus' life comes to a close, the goddess of beauty tells the lake that it was you that were reflecting the beauty of each other. And that's what the lake realized, that every time I would look at him, I would see my beauty in his eyes, and he would see my beauty in his, in his, his eyes. So we're often a reflection of each other. Now, part one, Santiago wanted to be a sheep herder, a traveling man and following his heart, the aspect of a Mason and a Sufi, to be a free man and to do what is right for him. Received his father's blessings, and uh, he loved the merchant's daughter, and he said that I couldn't have found God in the seminary, which reminded me a lot of Rumi and these different Sufi masters who basically tell you that to find God, that I couldn't find God in a temple, church, mosque. To find God, I had to listen to the teachings of my soul and find God within my heart. And that's what Santiago did, was to find God within his own heart, because that's where God is. And the aspect of dreams are the language of God, he was starting to take his dream seriously the omens and you also have this idea that everyone has an idea what the old man tells him that everyone has an idea on how others should lead their lives but not their own so we're too busy judging others thinking that we know or interpret or understand his or her situation but little do we not know that we need to analyze our own selves and analyze our own situation and look ourselves in the mirror before we you know tear down anybody else yeah if there's anything that's divisive you call it out anything that goes against humanity you call it out but in terms of generally you you know improve yourself focus on your own self-improvement and when you do that then the world around you improves automatically because it's all about your the what you're projecting from your heart mind body and soul now the old man Melchizedek again al kidder and now it reminded me a lot of the, of the Sufi master Sheikh Abdul Qadir Al Jilani when his mother had sent him from um, his home to go to Baghdad to become the teacher that he was meant to Melchizedek appeared at the door or Al Kidr the green one and said you're not ready yet I want you to wander the desert for a certain number of years until you master yourself and the elements around you and it was written Maktub like what it says in the book and it reminded me a lot of you know the scenario that Santiago gets put through the old man knew everything. He was an emissary of God sent to guide this young man because everything is written. He, they knew how everything was going to pan out. They had to put him through his trials and tribulations so he could become the being that he was meant to. 
and him wandering in the desert with the Bedouins reminded me a lot of the Sufi master. So I saw a lot of parallels there. And uh, he appears to the seeker when they are ready. You can't contact the old man. Only he can contact you if he deems you worthy for his interference and intercession into your life and affairs. Reminds me a lot also of Hassan Saba, the old man of the mountain. He also has this allure about him that you can't contact the old man. When the old man wants you, he comes to you. So I, I found that um, amusing going through that. And he always appears in some form or another. So there you go. And the aspect of never give up and what the old man wanted. For this information, he wanted sheep. And he basically told him that everything in your life has a price. In order to get something, you usually have to give something up. There's always a, some kind of a uh, cause and effect that we're living in our lives. And that's what he had taught Santiago, that God, Almighty God, the Grand Architect, has a plan for everyone, including you and I. So, basically, everything that happened in Santiago's journey, including him going to Tangier and meeting this individual who thought he was his friend, but this individual ended up robbing him of everything but he was being set up for his personal legend because if he wouldn't have gotten robbed then he wouldn't have been been helpless then he wouldn't have went to the crystal merchant's shop and th then becoming friends and teaching each other and one thing leading to another so life is just a beautiful grand game it's a grand design i mean we just let things get under our skin so much i mean if you really want something to like strengthen your faith something to strengthen your faith if you're if you're a freemason or a sufi or any spiritual path that you're following you have your own individual in individuality on which you're choosing to follow to help you make that connection to source or god then this is the book to basically lift your spirits up and strengthen your faith through the good and bad times knowing eventually just keep the faith that all works out for your own good whether someone or something leaves from your life or whether it enters Appreciate all of it. Cherish it. For there, it's all there to teach you something. That's what we learned from Santiago's story. And the aspect is, you have order out of chaos. Santiago experienced his, you know, the aspect of you got to fall down in order to get back up. That's basically it. Now you move on to part two. Now the boy's presence, Santiago, alone was an omen in the shop. You're all because him being there not only helped him financially having a place to sleep a place to eat having somewhere to pass his time and build his resources up again he was also being a good omen for the merchant whose business was slow and now with this boy all of all of his clientele and money was coming in so it, it was a um, a give and take relation it was helping both of them and they were both growing in their own way with their own realizations as you read the interactions between the two and yeah, it was an omen because you're always where you're meant to be. He helped a merchant embrace change, both giving, growing patiently in the process. And everything is a chain of events, no coincidences. There are no coincidences in life. Everything in your life is there to teach you in some way. That's the beauty we learned from Santiago's story. And everyone has his or her way of um, basically learning things. You have your own way of learning and interpreting things. I have my way, you have your way. Everyone has their own way. That's the beauty of this journey. Get some coffee real quick. All right. So the alchemist. The alchemist is one who can turn metal into gold or from the Sufi and Masonic aspect turn your lower qualities into higher qualities your lower nature into your higher nature or smooth out your rough ashlar into a smoother ashlar and become a smooth being in your process and uh, the basically the aspect of the the Jedi the Sufis also the Jedi and the the word Jedi comes from the Arabic word al Jedi meaning master of the way so Santiago was becoming the alchemist and the Jedi the return of the Jedi in his own journey from a Sufi and Masonic aspect. He was going through his chaos and order and uh, learning how to trust God and trust you know, the experiences around him, the friends that he was meeting, those that were there to test him, to break him, to help him. It's all relative. 
Just like what the um, old man Melchizedek told him, that ultimately it's all one thing. And in Sufism we say Allah or God is the only reality. And everything on this earth is an extension of that divinity. So if everything is part of that one source, whether something is there to test you or break you, it's ultimately part of that you know, one divine hand that's guiding you. Like they say, God is holding you in the palm of his hand. And everything within that hand is either there to guide you, test you, break you. But it's all from the same source. And that's a realization that only few have in this life. And if we all did, then this world would be a very great place to live. But we all have to strive with our individual efforts like Santiago did and what Paolo, the author, is teaching us. And love is our true language. Like when he met Fatima, there was no words exchanged. They just looked at each other and fell in love. And that was um, a beautiful moment of Santiago's journey where he realized that is materialism really going to make me happy or the love of another being in my life? We spend all of our lives just chasing after money, degrees, title, but is tomorrow promised to any of us? I could go, go to sleep right now and I might not wake up. What good is the money in my pocket and my, you know, my resources, my assets? What's that going to do for me? The real spiritual wealth is what good did you do for yourself and others? Which reminds me of this story of the angel of death. And the Sufi believes during the five daily prayers in Islam, the angel of death, Azrael, visits you. And each time he will ask God to take you. And God will say no, only when it's time. There was a story when one man was about to be taken. He was a, you know, he was a rich CEO. He had a women, car, degrees, money, whatever your average man desires, he had it times 10. And he started crying when the angel of death took his soul. And he said, what about my money, my cars, my wife, my children? He said, no, you can't take any of that with you. And he asked Azrael, what can I take with me? He said, what the things, your spiritual wealth, the wealth of your heart, and what good did you do for yourself and others? That's your real wealth. And that's what you take with you. And that's what Santiago learned, that I'm putting myself through all of this craziness and hell. From I left my hometown, I left my country, I came to this foreign land, all for gold and treasure. And when he looked at this beautiful woman, he's saying that's what the real man's treasure is, to ignite love in his heart and to love and dedicate his life to a good woman. Not just to himself, to his family, that's the real treasure. And that's what he found within himself. So I, I honor that and I respect that. And the aspect of Maktub, it is written, Holy Quran, Surah 7, verse 157, where the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, reiterates the same. Trust fate and trust God's plan for you. That's all pretty much you could do. And you have the aspect of Santiago meeting the elder. Just like how John Wick cross, crosses the desert to get mercy and help from the elders of the East, so to the Santiago, and they get impressed with him, and they basically allow him to do what he's doing. You know, with the aspect of honoring tradition, as the book teaches you, the Arab book, customs and traditions, the Bedouin traditions, which is, uh, it was very good to hear. I mean, good to read and put yourself in Santiago's shoe and understand all of taking place around him. Now, you also have the aspect of meeting the alchemist who tested his courage. He put a knife to his head because he wanted to test him, like, you know, what is this individual really about? Because you don't really get tested unless you're put in a moment of danger or anything sensitive. Because most people, in good times, everyone's okay. Good things, um, they're always saying good stuff. But you truly know a man's character when you put him in a situation of test, of pressure, and that's when you know what his mantle is made of. And that's what the alchemist tested Santiago with. And Santiago passed his test. And he knew, okay, you know, this is the, this is the um, individual that I've been chosen to guide. And he also had the aspect of the serpent when they come across this venomous serpent and they make the circle. The alchemist makes a circle and puts him in there and the snake couldn't attack them. And it made me laugh. It made me th think about the SpongeBob episode. That maybe that episode was a homage to this uh, alchemist when the sea bear is about to attack them and they draw the circle and they go in the circle and the sea bear can't attack them. So that, that was a moment of humor. I, it made me think of sp the SpongeBob episode. But it is true, those who have that interpretation and power within them, 
in their hearts, mind, body, and soul. You do have the power to do those things where your average human cannot. And that's the goal of the Sufi master, to lose himself so much in the love of God and everything around him that he becomes a master of everything and everyone around him. That's why the Sufi masters who live in the desert, who dwell in the desert, when they come across beings like jinns and ghouls, ghouls and jinns don't see them as a threat because they're not your average human beings. That's the beauty of the Sufi masters, even the ones that I visited in like remote border regions where no one knows, where no average human can live. And these beings are dealing with other beings. So that's what basically the alchemist represented to me. He was testing Santiago as his disciple. He was choosing him as his disciple with his test of courage to make sure that was he worth his time. Now you have the aspect of trust your destiny, heart and destiny always, love or responsibility. And that's when he thought, you know, Fatima is waiting for me. What should I do? And Fatima said, you go do what you need to do. And it ultimately, it was all meant to be. He would find his treasure. He would come back to her. And that's what the alchemist tested him, that you do what's right for you. Follow your heart. And he already knew he was going to make the right decision. So there's always a test of courage and your word as well, because you also have to be a man of your word. So the encounter with the guards, when they encounter the guards, when you possess great treasures, you are rarely believed when telling others. There's a, even the aspect of human nature. So many people that I know, kids that I know, great talented individuals, but when they would tell others of their ability, they're often seen as crazy. And that's what the alchemist is saying, that often in this world, you're seen as a crazy person, but you must never lose faith of the maktub, or it is written, the plan God has for you. And God holds you in the palm of his hand, as the saying goes. Now, Santiago overcoming his fear with the word, with the wind, the sun, and being connected with God through his trials and tribulation, to trust the glory and love of God, like the Mason and the Sufi do, and following one's heart. Trust God and do not fear the Sufi and the Mason. And the alchemist's final quote to Santiago was, No matter what he does, every person on earth plays a central role in the history of the world. And normally he doesn't know it. And um, he, he's right. We're all walking each other home. We all have a role to play in each other's lives. Seldom do we know what we said to somebody probably planted a seed where it helped them in some way. Maybe one bad moment in your life led you to a moment of reflection where you started researching and writing and doing whatever it is that you, you're doing. You have to analyze that, okay, after I had this experience, what happened after that? What happened before that? Try to connect the dots in your life and things will make sense to you. Your moments of downs, ups, uh, defeats, successes, victories, failures, successes, you'll get it you will and it will just make you cherish this life and all those beings that came in your life even so much more and that's what the alchemist is teaching us as well now with the epilogue you have I also have this concept that the treasure was at the church the whole time back in Andalusia and God was basically building and test testing Santiago with his humor and plan and he found his treasure and he returned to Fatima and this also reminded me a lot of not just the Sufi and Masonic aspects of trusting God and following your heart, but also the story of Kingdom Hearts, which I made a whole separate video about a few months ago. And Kingdom Hearts is basically teaching you the same thing, that we're in moments of darkness and chaos and all this stuff that comes into our life. That's the end of my notes. And, you know, the aspect that all this darkness comes into our lives and and basically test us, puts us down, but ultimately it's good and light are destined to win. Our hearts are destined to win. That's what we learned from Santiago's story, that you are the alchemist of your own life. Where do you find God within your heart? What do all these scriptures tell you? Kingdom of heaven is within. Holy Quran, God is closer to you than your jugular vein. What, what does it say in the aspect of maktub, which this mentioned is also in the Quran? Trust God's plan for you. It is written. What's for you can never escape you. 
stop worrying about marriage or spouses or career or money just be yourself as long as you continue to be yourself try your best have a good heart for self and others then what's for you cannot escape you and you also have your own time to shine no need to worry about this other person they have this they have this why don't i have it they're going here they're going here why, why am i not doing it so you're always where you're meant to be things that you're meant to do places that you're meant to be in and we're all walking each other home right him honoring his decision to travel go to egypt and the thief robs him then that leads him to the merchant and then they help each other in their own growth they share these moments of brotherhood and um, i guess happiness and memories that they create together then then he goes to the desert he does the same with fatima with the bedouins with the englishmen with the camel driver who was a you know teacher in his own right and then he laid, basically leads him to the alchemist so it was one thing leading to the other then he alchemist guides him recompensates him after giving his money to the uh to the tribe as a bet that he can turn he can create a windstorm to test him and put him on the spot and make him realize his courage and then in the end the discs that he gave him get robbed and then eventually the person who robs him tells him the location of the treasure so you see when you lose one thing you gain it back in another way and eventually he returns home safe and sound with his treasure and comes back for his love so with the foundation that I laid in the beginning of this video when I offer my summary of the book then I went through the notes then I have concluding thoughts I hope you were able to realize that the story of the Mason or the Sufi or the alchemist is pretty much one and the same with the short human life that God has given us be good to yourself and others love everybody don't hurt anybody and you can see how beautiful this life can become and you too like Santiago will find your own personal legend be true to yourself find your legend find your heart and strengthen your faith and cherish each moment good and bad past present who's in your life at the moment who's not so it's all guest house this world is a guest house we check in at a certain amount of time and we can check out at any moment so I'm very grateful to um, my friend and my Masonic brother who recommended this book to me it does indeed strengthen your faith to ex extents beyond possible and I thank Paolo Coelho excuse me if I'm mispronouncing the name thank you for giving this gift to humanity and as a Sufi Muslim and as a Freemason I commend you sir and I thank you and I recommend anyone who's watching this video please check this out and hopefully whatever you learn in your own capacity aids you in your own way I thank you very much and I hope you were able to gain something from this thank you and I wish you all a great rest of July ahead